Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to be looking at uh, letting our AI kind of attack our player and cause some damage. All right. So with that, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our character and we're going to open them up, and we're going to add some variables. This first one we'll call current health, and we'll change this to a float. Then we'll add another called max health. Oops, not ma health. Uh, max health. There we go. And then we'll compile and save really quick. And now we can give them some default values. So we'll say 100 and 100, and we're good to go for now. Next, we'll go back to our content browser, and we're going to right click and we're going to add a user interface uh, widget blueprint here, um, which we'll call UI underscore health bar. Okay, and we'll open this up. And basically, this is just going to be a visual representation on the screen of our character's health. So we'll take a progress bar here, drag it and drop it onto the canvas panel, and then we'll kind of reposition it a little bit, something like that maybe. All right, then we're going to go over under the details panel to the progress uh, section, and by percent we're going to add a binding, so create a binding, and this is going to create a function that called get percent, and it's basically just trying to get the percent value for uh, for our bar. So what we'll do is we will cast to our third person character now. And the object will be get player character. And now that we've done that, we can access the values from our character. So we'll say get current health. And we also want to get the max health. All right. So what we'll do next is we're going to do a simple float divided by float division here. And that'll convert uh, these values here to a percent and then we'll plug that into the return value. And so we should be good to go. The only thing now is when you compile, it's going to say there's a little note here, um, just that saying that the cast fail doesn't end with a return node, um, but that isn't really something you need to worry with right now. So we can go back to our third person character, and on event begin play, we want to create a widget, that widget being our, you know, our health bar. Okay and then we will take the return value here and add it to the viewport. Alright, so you can compile and save, and now if we press play really quick you'll see it's been added to the viewport in the top left there. You'll also see that our AI guy is you know, doing his little patrolling stuff, so we'll work with him next. Uh, we'll go back to uh, the content browser and we'll go into our AI folder and open up our AI character. So if you recall we have some you know, kind of states already in place. We have like a, a roaming state, a chase, and a patrol. So the ones we're going to work with today are going to be, um, well actually just going to be the uh, chase state here. So, um, but we're also going to be using this pawn sensing component that we added a while back. If you don't remember how we added that, we just type pawn sensing and you can add it like that. Uh, but built into the pawn sensing, Right, is some hearing and seeing functions. So we're going to use this on C pawn. Okay, so we'll click add, and that'll add that onto our on C pawn. And uh, basically, it just returns whatever pawn that it sees. Okay, so um, we're going to take this pawn, and we are going to cast it to our third person character. So basically, if it's our character, then we want to tell the pawn or this AI to chase them. Okay, so we'll drag off and we'll say chase player. Now we're going to change up this chase player uh, event a little bit just so um, to kind of make things, I guess, run a little better. Uh, so we're going to click on the event and we're going to add a new input and we'll just call this um, player to chase. Okay, and we'll change this to a pawn. All right, and so. Now we can take this and plug it into target actor rather than doing the get player character. All right. And so now if we go back down here to our on pawn sensing, we will take our third person character and pass it through as the player to chase. Okay. So I'll just comment this out saying um, chase player when we see the pawn or yeah. When we see them. That'll be fine. Okay, so we've got that done. Now let's go about adding some damage. So with this same chase player event, we want to move this out of the way for now. Um, and basically on success, 
we are going to say apply damage. Okay, now who are we going to apply damage to? Well, we're going to apply damage to the player that we've been chasing, right? Because if we've successfully reached them, then we want to, you know, cause some damage. So then uh, for the damage to cause, we'll right click and say promote to variable, and we'll call this damage. Okay, and we want to make this editable so we can edit on like a, a per AI basis. So compile and save really quick and give it a default value. Uh, we'll just say 10 for now. Alright, and now the last thing that we need to do is take this player to chase and go plug it in out here to the chase player event. Okay. So, that should, we should be good to go now. So, um, basically the player will, or the pawn right now is in his patrol state, so he'll be patrolling, but when he sees us, he should come and chase us and then apply some damage. Now the last thing we need to do uh, to actually make this damage be, you know, be applied is go to our third person character, add an event, any damage, and um, we want to drag out and say set current health, and we'll set it to the value of our current health, so get current health minus the damage, and plug that in like so, and we should be good to go. So we'll press play to try this out. He's going to run up there. I'm just going to make sure that he sees me. So you see he stopped doing his patrol state, and now he's running to us. Since And when he reaches us, you know, he causes some damage. So there we go. Now technically we're dead right now. Right, but he's still going to chase us um, and still going to try to cause damage to us. So let's fix that. Let's make him go back to doing whatever he was doing before. Okay. So what we're going to do is, in our third person character, we're going to take our current health and say, is it less than or equal to zero? Okay. If it is, then we know that the player is dead. So we're going to do a branch. And what we're going to do is we are going to use what's called an event dispatcher which just kind of sends out this broad message to anyone listening for this dispatcher um, and then it'll tell all of our AI to be you know to stop trying to attack us okay so we'll add one that we'll just call uh, player died okay and we can drag it out and it'll bring up this list of things we can do and we'll just say call so on true, we will call player died, and that'll send the mess the dispatcher out to everyone listening. Next, we'll go back to our AI, and we'll go find the event begin play event, and we'll create some space here. And what we want to do is cast to our third person character. For the object, again, we want to get the player character. And now that we've casted to our character we can drag off of as third person and say um, we'll say assign player died so what this will do is um, it will create a binding to the player died dispatcher and then it will also create an event that is assigned to that binding um, so basically whenever the dispatcher is called the event that's been assigned to it will fire so if that didn't make any sense I recommend looking into event di event dispatchers because um, they can be pretty useful sometimes so we'll go ahead and say assigned player died and you see it added this event and we will rename this to reset AI okay so we'll reorganize a little bit connect the cast to bind event and then we'll hook this back up to the uh, switch on you know switch on the state okay so um, Next, what we need to do is take our pawn sensing component, drag it out here. All right, now it'll create a get of it. And well, if we click on it, we'll look over here in the details panel and we'll see that um, it has this enable sensing updates. All right, so basically every 0.5 seconds it updates, um, which allows it to be able to see us, right? It allows it to be able to, you know, sense us. And so all we need to do is just drag off and you know turn that off so we'll say set um, what is it called set sensing yeah set sensing uh, updates enabled okay so we'll set that to false all right and that will basically stop our player or our AI from being able to sense the player okay 
and then after that we want to tell him to return to whatever state he was doing. So we'll just take all of this logic right here, control C, control V, and paste it, and then we'll just go back to doing what they were doing. So let's try this out, let's press play, there he is, he's going to do his thing, I'm just going to get closer to him so we can die faster. He'll come over, he'll start attacking us like that, and once you know we're dead, well, I guess he's going to try to sense us again. Hmm. Well, uh, that's pretty strange. Usually this works. Um, I don't know if it's just a bug or not, because we're essentially here enabling this, right, which allows the the AI, you know, to be able to update his senses, so, you know, allows him to be able to see things or hear things. Um, and I know when you untick it, it works, so not sure why, why it's not behaving. Um, but one thing I think we could do is... Uh, as a way to bypass it, we could go down to Chase Player. I'll just kind of move this really quick, and we'll do a branch, um, and we'll check uh, if that. Um, yeah, we'll we'll get the pawn sensing really quick, and we'll say uh, get enabled sensing updates. Okay, and if it is true, then you know we'll allow him to chase the player. But if it's false, then he won't. So we try this out, I think it should work. So we'll let him come kill us. Alright, so we're dead. Now hopefully he won't come and try to find us again. Alright, so it seems like it's working now. Um, you know, he's just going to continue on because he thinks we're dead. So, so yeah, I mean, there you have it. There's kind of the basic way of, uh, you know, having an AI attack you, and then once you're dead, he goes back to doing his own thing. Um, yeah, so I hope you found this helpful. If you liked the video and want to see more, you know, like or subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.